a couple strains have been coming out. Um, so, so one, I, I thought telling Dan when you were speaking of, uh, you know, China has, you know, they started off, you know, like kind of Paul was saying, it's all harmony, it's all land. You know, we have no colonial aspirations. Um, they've convinced some people of that. Some people still believe that. You know, there are you know tons of apologists everywhere. Um, and but but now, you know, there's there's this rise of you know, what, what they're calling the, uh, you know, the, the, the wolf warrior, right? Wolf warrior diplomacy mm. and, you know, wolf warrior, you, can, you know, so it's all about the wolf warrior and, you know, it stems from, the, you know, that movie where, you know, they got their own version of Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know, commando style, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and so how, I guess, do you, you know, where do you see that going? Like, like where, where do you see, you know, the wolf warrior tactics, you know, from China? Where do you see the, um, you know, the, the apologist, um, you know, Sean Rain and, and you know, Fionn Wright, and, you know, these people that are, you know, basically, you know, you know, downing the West in favor of this China narrative that, um, as we all here believe, is is a complete, a complete sham. Well, China's been overrated for a long time. I remember in 2008, when the U.S. was suffering economic problems, I would get asked a lot of questions when I would speak. I mean, I would speak about business law matters like intellectual property, but people would say, you know, China's going to dominate this in five years. China's gonna do this. Uh, do you think their government's better than ours? I remember at some event, somebody said the, the um, reason China was so much better run than the US was because they have engineers running their country and we have lawyers, to which my response was Jimmy Carter. But um, what I would also always point out is why do we always talk about China doing amazing things? I'll tell you a country that's done amazing things that doesn't get publicity, South Korea. South Korea in 1962 was the second poorest country in the world, second only to Niger. It took me years to convince my uncle to go there. He served in the Korean War. He did not want to go back because all he remembered were the rats. Uh, Korea has not only become a wealthy country, I mean, Seoul's amazing city, it's like Tokyo, but it get, it's a democracy. That's the country we should be looking to. Taiwan is a country we should be looking to. It's done the same thing. And there is a term um, for countries like where China is right now. They're called middle market. And everybody always thinks these middle market countries, when they're growing fast, they're going to become super wealthy, become developed countries. Well, the reality is, is it's easy to become a middle market country. You do that with cheap labor. It's very difficult to become a developed country. In like the last 40 years, there have been only like five countries that have become developed countries. Chile, Taiwan, South Korea, Hong Kong, which barely counts, and Singapore, which barely counts. It's not that easy. There's no evidence to indicate that China is going to become a developed country. Yes, Shanghai is developed. Yes, Beijing is developed. But there are a billion people in, um, or I don't know if it's a billion, there are a lot of people in one China point. who are living in poverty still. And China knows this. And China knows that they have overreached right now because the U.S. is really going after them. And the EU, not loudly, but quietly, is sort of following. Japan is going after them. Japan is paying its companies right. to leave China. Other countries are supposedly doing that more quietly. So right. China's very worried. Why is China still buying agricultural goods from the United States under that whatever it was called, phase one of the trade deal. They're doing it because they don't want more plugs pulled on them.